Yeah, so I think we can start. Uh, I welcome everyone to today's Maritime Innovation Update. I'm your moderator, Oliver Schaal, and today's speaker is Emin Nakil Giolo. He has been working at the Fraunhofer CML for a little over three years now, and his work mainly focuses on deep learning based research and applications on developing digital solutions for the maritime sector. Today, he's going to talk about one of his projects that he's involved in, that's SMARFM. And SMARFM is a multilingual maritime speech recognizer that has been developed by our colleagues here at the Fraunhofer. It specializes in maritime speech and has been gaining recognition and traction among the maritime actors. So before I leave Amy into it, I once again uh, remind you to please leave your camera and microphone turned off. And after the presentation, there will be time for questions. So without further ado, we mean. Yeah, thank you so much for the kind introduction, Oliver. Um, yes, um, myself, I welcome you all as well to today's MIU session. My name is Emin. Today I'm going to talk about our project, MarFM. It's a multilingual maritime speech recognizer. Uh, to start off, um, I would like to introduce the communication um, among the maritime sector. Uh, for those who are not familiar, maybe need to some introduction to it. Um, what you see in the picture right now, uh, it is a maritime personnel uh, communicating through a VHF radio system. VHF radio stands for very high frequency radio. It's the main mandatory like main. Uh, means of communication uh, among ships and any kind of maritime actors. Also, it's also used in aviation sector as well. Uh, as you can see, only kind of supporting mechanism of the personnel is the pen and paper. Uh, it's not really reliable or valuable, uh, but there are maybe it's in a maybe slow day of traffic could be manageable, but there are also um, uh, messages like this. Hoping it was audible. Uh, that that was a distress call from Gulf of Canada. Um, it was a real distress call, mayday call, uh, by a ship named Northern Bell. Unfortunately, only half of the crew was uh, was saved from this accident. But such cases, because you can see, there are a lot of information in this message: location of the ship, name of the ship. That is a distress call by the mayday calls. Um, these are important information that all of them will help uh, the, in this case, search and rescue team to rescue the, the ship in difficult situation. But it's not just for the cases such the emergency occurs, but we also want to address the day-to-day -day cases that will kind of take the, the edge of the workload for the maritime personnel as well, especially the communication personnel, uh, considering there is a lack of personnel in the maritime sector as well. It's something you wanted to address as well. Um, to that end, we have developed the application. It's not just the application, but also offer the main part of the application is the services we offer. Um, currently, we offer speech recognition, recognition services. Uh, what you're seeing right now is the modular structure of, of our app. Um, we have the microphone client, the initiator of the conversation uh, by listening to radio chats. Uh, also, the user of these application can just respond back as well. I will show you in a little demo uh, in a bit. Uh, with that application, we also bring up uh, a user-friendly, I would say, uh, um, user interface. And these all things connected by a middleman, uh, the API that we developed. Um, we wanted to make it modular because not every customer or every situation requires it. User interface, they mostly focus on the back end services that we provide. Uh, in our case, the speech recognizer and also database management. For that, we created the API that is quite separable from the entire structure. Um, uh, speaking of the, the services of the back end, is the mail. 
uh, is our speech recognizer our main service. Um, we have two models, one German English, uh, one Finnish English. In the Finnish English one, we have the Swedish as a supportive mechanism, supportive language, sorry. Um, but to that end, I would like to add, it's not the, the conversational part as a supportive, but the, the case in Finland geography, uh, especially the, the geographical location between Sweden and Finland, there are two names for them. Uh, one is Sweden, one is Swedish, and one in Finnish. Uh, therefore, time to time, uh, you get to hear in the VHF calls that the geographical names, like locations, are named in Swedish, uh, in their Swedish name. So we wanted to consider that, and therefore we added this as a supportive language, especially for the geographical locations. Um, our initial, as to going strong, the first model is the German English model. Um, it is our main, the main language for both of them is the German language. English is a default background language, so always inc included in our uh, applications. Um, one addition to our German English model is the language model that we have. It's kind of a, again, a supportive mechanism. What it does is kind of rescores or, so to speak, retranslates the, the transcription that come out of the, the speech recognizer. Um, it kind of adds to the transcription because it has in itself um, the probability uh, understanding of word sequences that may come one right next to each other, and also some dictionary of certain objects. In our case, it's the maritime objects and SMCP phrases, the standard maritime communication phrases. Uh, it kind of does this internal error handling. The, let's say, uh, I know these are maritime sequences, and that was the transcription, but it seems that transcription fits better and so forth. That's the rescoring and retranslation part uh, done by the language model. The inference rates are quite fast. We have we have two G GPUs, no, CPUs here. They are mid-range CPUs, nothing, nothing special about them. Um, we get to see the inference rate of 3.5 seconds to 4 seconds for uh, 20, 25 seconds of audio recordings. Um, that is quite fast for the real time as well. That's going to be in the real time application that's going to help the person out too. Uh, again, we have the database management. Uh, we have the audio transcription and some metadata from these audio and transcription as well. So how it works, we have our VHF system here. Um, as soon as you started the connection, uh, there is going to be a recording happening through our MoreFM application. And then everything goes through API, API and our domain co coordinator. Um, sends everything to database and triggers the services to, to the transcription. As long as there's a transcription, it's sent back to our application and you get to see it in real time, what's been said. Um, so how it looks, uh, I have a little video demo here. Um, for this demo, um, we put up two radio channels, uh, one from England and one from our, our area around our uh, building, CML building, Um So these are real calls that happened. Um, in the east of England, the uh, county, I guess, uh, east of England. Um, so you get to hear uh, the radio and it's transcribed in the real time as well. There were a couple of features that we put on. Uh, you can replay it. Um, you can change the channel in this case, and for example, listen, listen to a German channel. Um, again, it's multilingual. That's why in this case, the model is German English model. Um, uh, these are uh, real recordings from around our building. And uh, we also, while you're listening, over. While you're listening, you can also respond back, and this is going to be transcribed as well. Um, we also have the search function. If you want to search back what's been said or if you missed something, um, you can search by words. Um, again, it's quite fast and straightforward. Uh, you also have the chance to search through the dates. Um, as you can see, for example, uh, these are recordings from yesterday and put them this recording from a couple of weeks back. So if you wanted to, let's say, filter out any kind of audio recording in this case, 
uh, dating back uh, from yesterday or just want to see the recording starting from yesterday, you can just do it um, with our little search button, search um, date button as well. Um, that's the, the main functionalities of it. And we also added a feature that we call a user feedback mechanism. Let's say there was like a mistranslated word. Uh, as a user, you can come on and just change the word. And this is going to be saved, this change, the alter alteration is going to be changed. Who, the information regarding the changes, who done the change, at what time is did it. And uh, you get to see the latest um, variation of the change. The idea behind it is that uh, to use that uh, correction uh, done by the maritime personnel, which have the domain expertise, uh, to use for the further training or further Humble teaching um, for uh, getting a better model for the transcriptions. Uh, because that's one of the things uh, in this domain is that you don't really have a lot of labeled data that's going to help you with the domain adaptation of the model. Um, with that, we kind of address this issue as well. If you get the, so since we have the domain expertise personnel, when they have the time, uh, they just put on the, the correct version of the transcription so we can use it for further training and bettering our model. Um, so to conclude it all, um, right now we have this multilingual speech recognizer. Along with that, we have a scalable API and we also for database management. Um, let's call this more of an API 102, no, 1.0. And so to speak, if you were to have the 2.0, what we're working on right now is a text-to-speech mechanism that we want to add as well. Um, same language is going to be uh, supported. Um, we we are doing it with, a, for example, one of the partners that we work with right now. They want to have this text-to-speech so they can broadcast their weather reports or hourly reports uh, using this system. Uh, on top of that, we are also working with um, natural language processing applications that we can work on top of the transcriptions, such as error handling. We kind of do it with the language model regarding German English one. We also want to add, for example, named entity recognition. We want to recognize the entities, in our case, as ships, uh, geographical locations, and in kind of maritime uh, phrases. So we can further analyze it or further put into error handling to make sure it was a correct ship name or there's a ship named like this and so forth. Uh, all in all address like points out to the data analysis at the end. Um, so the user and also the, the developer we are can just look at the data, what we are working with. We can use this analysis for any kind of further purposes as well. That's the main idea for the upcoming future of more FM application. Um, that would conclude my little presentation. Uh, thank you all for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, thank you, Irene, for the insightful presentation. So now the audience has a chance to either write a question in the chat, or you lift your ha hand and ask, uh, unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, yeah, so we are going to wait a bit to see if there are any questions. The integration of DSC plant. Uh, I'm not sure what DSC stands for. If you could uh, elaborate on what it stands for, I might answer the question. Uh, Hal. Initial selective call. Uh, uh, again, I'm not informed on that. I'm not aware what it is. Uh, so I, I'm going to have to get back to you on that to check if it's applicable in our case as well. Uh, sorry to leave you hanging like this. But I will get back to you as soon as I have an information on that. Okay, yeah, so if there are no further questions right now, then actually I have some questions. So. What kind of data has been used to train your models and what are the accuracy levels? Um, the data um, we have used, we use with the projects and project partners. Every data we have, that's the, the 
in between agreement between the partners. We use their data to adapt the domain um, to their data and their characteristics of the, the customers, of the inter like interactions they have. Um, the other data is come from the, the partners. Uh, the accuracy level, uh, we've done a research um, last year regarding the accuracy levels um, for our German English model. Because accuracy level, but to put on a selective uh, test data set, we've done it in a um, in a German data set that we use uh, to train our model. And for that, we have the accuracy of 30 percent, 27 to 30 percent accuracy level for the maritime speech. Um, just for the reference, in the same case, that is non fine tuned, non domain adapted model is go to 35, like 40 to 45 percent of uh, word error rate. Uh, word error rate being number of error that occurs. Uh, so uh, the less, the better in this case. So yeah, we've seen a quite improvement with our domain mm -hmm. adaptation for the maritime. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, Ralph has, seems to have, uh, yeah, we asked this question. So does it go both directions? Can you write a message that is spoken out? Exactly. That's what we have right now, the TTS, the text-to-speech model. Um, with that, you write your messages, and then it's going to be spoken out by each VHF. That's the idea. That's the what we are working on right now. At the moment, it's not possible, but we have the text-to-speech model, but we want to improve. Um, so it's going to be more uh, the pronunciations are right, and also in the same language pronunciation, and just connect to the VHF, and you can just broadcast uh, through your VHF uh, what you want to broadcast. Yeah, thank you for the question. Okay, so maybe I have one more. So have you implemented your solution on any ship, traffic vessel service center or laboratory? And uh, if not, do you plan to do this? Yeah, we have actually. Uh, we have like a, uh, we have a partner we work with, uh, Spirit Marine. Um, we implemented our demo you just seen uh, to their laboratory. Uh, they are a breach laboratory uh, where can customers just come in to see uh, what kind of bridge they want to buy or talk about it. Uh, we have our uh, more FM application running there all the time. Uh, and any kind of actor in the maritime gets to see how it looks like in a real bridge, uh, how it helps you, and how accurate in the case of maritime as well. So we've done, this is the the, the biggest uh, integration we've done that is currently working. Um, in the meantime, this year, uh, we are our, our Finnish partner. Uh, we are going to integrate Finnish English plus Swedish model to their end so they can use it in their vessel traffic center um, to help with the, with the communication work. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So if you have any and if you have any further questions, you can message Emin, uh, for example, with the email on the screen. And are there any other possibilities to reach out to you? Uh, yes, uh, you are seeing my contact info on the screen. You can also go to marfm.ai and reach to us uh, through the the contact in contact um, form there, and you get to see a little bit insight as well of the what we are offering with this application and the project as well. Yeah, either go to website or please feel free to email me uh, if you're interested in any kind of uh, of yet any questions or interested in any kind of collaboration. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So do we have any information for next uh, next week's MIU or the next MIU? Yes, uh, next oh, yeah. week. Exactly. So next yeah, it's going to be Christian Wieck and yeah. Pascal Wonrad. Exactly. And they're going to talk about uh, Robotik und VR, AR Technologie zur Überwachung und Wartung in German this time. Yes. So we're looking forward to that. So please make sure to join in again next week at the same time. And yeah, I see you then. A good weekend. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice, have a nice weekend.